Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm an optics engineer for the Navy here at Crane, Indiana. And I'm Aaron, and I'm an optics engineer too. I'm going to be talking to you about infrared technology. But first, I want to show you some really cool sunglasses that we've developed. This pair of sunglasses was created to help your eyes adjust to fast changing light conditions, like when you leave a really dark room and go outside on a sunny day. When you do this, your eyes take time to adjust. Most people would just put on or take off a pair of sunglasses. Using the glasses we've developed, you always wear the glasses, and depending on the amount of light outside, they will adjust automatically to the conditions. Let me demonstrate. When I flip the switch, I instantly change the glasses from light to dark to light. This is done by applying a voltage across a layer of liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are similar to what you might find in a laptop display. As you know, if someone turns on a light in a dark room, your eyes take time to adjust. The same is true if you move from outside on a sunny day to indoors. Inside your eyes are receptors that detect the amount of light and the type. These receptors are called rods and cones. The rods are sensitive to changes in brightness, and the cones detect color. Your eye responds to the amount of light by opening or dilating, or closing and constricting your iris. But most importantly, your rods and cones also change sensitivity. In dark environments, your cones, and especially your rods, become more sensitive. The amount of time it can take your rods to adjust and let you see things in a dark room can be as long as 30 minutes. And when you move outdoors on a sunny day from a dark room, it takes less time, but still several minutes. It's really important to note that your iris will adjust very quickly to big changes in light, while it's the rods and cones that take much longer to adapt. These sunglasses work to keep a consistent amount of light entering your eyes in different lighting conditions, thereby shortening the amount of time it takes for your eyes to adjust. Now, I want to ask you a question. Can you think of some situations when it benefits your eyes to adjust or change sensitivity quickly? So, did you think of any? How about driving in and out of tunnels? Or maybe when an outfielder looks up to catch a baseball on a sunny day? These glasses are just one of the technologies that we work with here at Crane. Another cool technology that we work with is infrared, and Aaron is going to tell you all about it. Infrared? Did someone say infrared? Hi, I'm Aaron and I'm an optics engineer too. And it's true, sometimes we need help seeing things we can't normally see well, or even see at all. And that's where infrared technology can help. What is infrared? Infrared is a word that describes a band of wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum that are defined as having longer wavelengths than visible light. Visible light is what you can see with your eye naturally. The light you can see with your eye is referred to as white light and consists of seven individual colors. We use the expression Roy G. Biv as in Mr. Roy G. Biv to make it easier to remember these colors. Roy G. Biv stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Just beyond the visible white light is another spectrum, and we call this spectrum the infrared spectrum. You know, the infrared spectrum is not visible to the human eye, but by using a special camera, we can detect it and make it visible on your screen. We can do this because all objects emit infrared waves in daylight or pitch black. As you're looking at this video, compare it with the infrared image of me. Heat is given off in the infrared spectrum. This is what we call a thermal signature. As you can see, the images are in grayscale. The brighter or whiter the areas of the image correspond to warmer temperatures, and the darker areas represent cooler temperatures. You may not believe it, but there are so many uses for infrared technology. Can you think of one or even two? How about when a police officer is looking for someone when it's dark outside? Do you see how a thermal signature could help identify a person in the dark? How about finding places around your home where there are energy leaks? For example, you can see cold and hot air escaping from windows and doors. Simply put, by using infrared technology, you can save a lot of money on your heating and cooling costs by seeing where these leaks are or where there are places that are not well insulated in your home. 
Now let's take a look at the actual camera that captures the infrared image. Come on. So this is the camera that takes those amazing infrared images. Any infrared thermal imaging system is comprised of three principal elements. The first one is the optics assembly. Very, very specialized, very, very expensive, made of very exotic materials found on the periodic table of elements. It's composed of a second thing, which is also the detector, which follows that, where those infrared waves are focused down and turn into an infrared image. It then goes from that detector array out to some very advanced circuitry. That circuitry processes that image, does some amazing things with it, really to enable us to see what we're looking at, gives us specific information, which then goes out to the display. Once again, the optics and the detector made up of these very specialized components are really what make this entire system do its thing for us. A system such as this, on the low end, on the cheap end, will run you about $100,000 just for something even just this small and only this thermal imaging system right here. Well, there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and step back to the other side of the camera now so we can continue on with our demonstration. Wow, now that's a pretty cool camera, don't you think? Now that you've learned a little bit about infrared technology, let's put your new knowledge to good use. To the left of me, I have two pitchers. One is filled with hot water and the other one with cold water. In the visible spectrum, or what you can see with your unaided eye, you really can't tell which one is hot and which one is cold. Now, let's switch to the infrared imagery. Can you identify which pitcher is filled with the hot water? How about the picture which is filled with the cold water? Well, what did you predict? Did you say the picture on the left is filled with hot water and the picture on the right is filled with cold water? Good job. Now, because it is my privilege, nay, my duty as a scientist to play, I have another question for you. I'm going to pour the hot water into the pitcher filled with the cold water. What do you think will happen? What will it look like in the infrared imagery? Now take a moment to discuss, predict, and draw what you think will happen, and then we'll show you. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. See how the hot and cold water are mixing together? Were your predictions close? All right, now let's go wrap things up with Josh. Aaron, that was a really interesting technology. Thanks for the demonstration. You're welcome, Josh. Aaron and I enjoy our careers as scientists for the Department of Defense here at Crane. The reason we were able to work on these and other optical technologies is because we got involved in our math and science coursework when we were elementary students, and we hope you will too. Thanks, we'll be seeing you.